two, one. Hello, everyone. I'm Carol Battle, and I manage the wellness program through the Office of State Human Resources. Many of you have been joining us regularly now for our monthly nutritional lunch and learn programs, and we're so excited to have you back. And I also want to welcome first time attendees as we continue to explore different healthy eating topics. Today, you will learn many of the numerous benefits of adopting more plant based foods into your diet. As a reminder, everyone who's registered for this event will receive a recording of today's presentation, as well as the recipe and a link to our web page, where we also host all past demos, as well as invitations to the upcoming webinars. We're fortunate to have with us Katie Godin. Katie's been a registered dietitian for 15 years. She works with Lifestyle Medical Center and focuses on helping individuals meet their health goals and improve their knowledge and relationship with food. Lifestyle Medical Center is an in-network nutritional counseling service. For those of you enrolled in the state health plan, virtual and in-person visits are covered at 100% for in-network providers. We have dietitians across the whole state, so I know people from all over North Carolina are attending today. If you're interested in meeting with one of these dietitians, it's easy to find one near you by logging into your state health plan portal. For today, please use the chat box if you have any questions during the presentation. Kara Rouse is on here today with me and she and I will be monitoring those and we'll be answering those with Katie during the cooking demo. We've saved a few minutes at the end of the event as well for your questions and answers. Let's welcome Katie now and learn more about plant-based foods and their benefits. Katie? <laughs> Hi everyone, excited to be back this month talking about the benefits of plant-based cuisine. I think something good to kind of remember is that there are little things that you can do uh, to just adopt more of these style foods into your lifestyle without necessarily becoming quote unquote, you know, fully plant-based. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about the different styles of plant-based eating. So first, you know, why might someone choose to live a plant-based lifestyle? Well, for, a, for many reasons, you know, I think sometimes people, when they've come in to see me, um, they might say that, you know, their cholesterol is high. So they are, you know, looking to adopt more plant-based foods into their lifestyle so that they can help reduce their cholesterol numbers and work on heart health. Um, and so that could be a reason of, and other health concerns that might be going on. Um, so there's, of course, environmental slash humanitarian concerns, those individuals that feel that they want to kind of, you know, as you've heard, reduce that carbon footprint, help put less strain on the environment um, and are passionate about that decide to eat less meat and kind of trend towards eating more plant-based foods as a result. Same with those humanitarian concerns, whether you um, are an animal rights activist or someone that just really prefers to um, not look at animals and animal products as a food source, um, that would be a reason to live that plant-based lifestyle. Sometimes people just want to eat more fruits and vegetables and legumes and nuts and seeds and really just don't care for meat. I've actually met quite a few people um, through counseling that really just don't like the taste of meat. Um, and so that could be just a personal preference. It really doesn't have anything to do with, you know, strong feelings towards the environment or humanitarian um, concerns, or maybe they're, you know, not necessarily needing to work on their cholesterol or they don't have a lot of health concerns. They just want to eat more plant-based foods. Um, and then there's, of course, religious conflictions. So certain religions do not eat certain types of meat, um, therefore uh, follow that plant-based cuisine for that reason. So let's talk about the benefits. So there's so many benefits, it's, you can't fit it into one slide. Um, I've attached a link here that you guys have maybe heard of the um, 
There's a blog, there's books, there's cookbooks called Forks Over Knives. This is a um, plant-based kind of beginner's guide. There's also on the blog lots of fun recipes and research and things like that just to kind of, if your wheels are you know, starting to turn after this presentation today and you're, you're kind of thinking, wow, maybe I do want to start to learn a little bit more um, uh, outside of this presentation. That would be a good website to go to. But OK, let's talk about some of the, the main benefits. So increased intake of essential nutrients. So many powerful nutrients, of course, come from fruits and vegetables just by themselves. So obviously kind of consuming more of those foods are going to provide you with more of those essential nutrients. Um, fiber. Fiber is so important. I think that's one of the things that I love to talk about with people the most when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one counseling. Um, fiber is really just one of the most important things due to helping with um, your digestive health, it's uh, helpful when you're trying to maintain a healthier body weight. Fiber helps to keep you full. Um, so fiber comes from a lot of the roughage from fruits and vegetables, from the skins, um, you know, from, from those hearty whole grains, from those beans, those legumes, and from those nuts and seeds. So really all plant-based foods have fiber in them. So that's why it is so essential, I think, to include more of these in your diet. Um, I kind of touched upon helping maintain that healthier body weight. So a lot of times people who eat more fruits and vegetables and what we call nutrient dense foods, which are whole foods, which are the, the less processed foods, um, those style foods keep you full longer. So they're utilized better by the body. Your body is receiving the nutrients and the things that it desires most. It tends to be more effective on your metabolism. Um, there's lots of reasons that plant-based cuisine and plant-based foods can help you achieve that healthier body weight. Um, as I mentioned before, reducing that risk of developing chronic disease, a lot of times people will come in to the office or speak to me about adopting these plant-based foods due to those health concerns. And simply, we talk a lot about fruits and vegetables and plant-based foods when someone has health concerns because of just their documented and proven um, assistance with reducing that risk of uh, specifically heart disease and diabetes. So um, those are two of the top things that plant-based cuisines can help um, reduce the risk of, help reverse. There's lots of research showing that. And then as I mentioned before, reducing that carbon footprint. Okay. So styles of plant-based diets. And you guys have maybe heard of these. Um, maybe not the last one, which I'm most excited to kind of touch upon just because it's relatively new. Um, so there are four different styles of plant-based cuisine. So when someone thinks about plant-based, I know sometimes being um, vegan can be very overwhelming to someone. Sometimes being just vegetarian can seem very overwhelming if you're someone that enjoys meat, but you want to kind of adopt some of those habits. Um, so there's two other forms, pescatarian and flexitarian, that I'm going to talk about here in just a second, that gives you some more flexibility and a little bit more options if you want to keep fish or keep meat into the picture. Okay, so let's first talk about vegan. Um, so vegan means that you're excluding all foods that contain animal products and animal byproducts, which would of course include meat, fish, but also dairy and eggs. So as I mentioned before, it is the most restrictive form of the plant-based diet. Um, now, someone who is vegan, they probably are consuming mostly things such as fruits and vegetables, of course, nuts and seeds, legumes, grains, healthy fats. Sometimes in order to get extra protein, 
They might consume some type of supplementation like a protein powder, a vegan protein powder that can be supplemented into smoothies. Um, here in just a second, I'm gonna go over lots of different alternate protein sources. And you guys are also going to get today a couple of handouts, which one will include a nice extensive list of alternate protein sources that whether you're going to be vegan or vegetarian or any of the four, um, you can just experiment with some of these alternate protein sources in general. Um, so one thing about being vegan, you do have to be very intentional about supplementation. So I think that that is one push. So if you know, you're know you someone who's contemplating this or been thinking about it for a while, or you're just curious about supplementation in general, seeking out a registered dietitian is very essential and very helpful. Um, you know, the, some of the nutrients that can be difficult to obtain on a vegan diet are B vitamins. Very, very tough to get, specifically B12 because it comes from animal products. Um, iron, another um, top vitamin that you're gonna find in a lot of animal products. Luckily, things are fortified. A lot of products have been fortified with things of this nature. So you are able to find foods and even vegan sources of things that contain some. Um, but omega-3 fats come mostly from fish. There are plant-based sources, which uh, you know I've mentioned in the alternate protein um, handout that you'll get. And a dietitian can kind of talk to you about some of the plant-based omega-3 fats in, uh, you know, in a lot more detail, but things like flax seeds, those are really, um, and certain um, oils like flaxseed oil, um, hemp seeds, things like that contain some of those omega-3 fats uh, as, and as well as chia seeds. So just kind of as I'm thinking, those are um, going to give you some of those omega-3 fats that you wouldn't be getting from fish if you were a vegan. Um, Calcium, vitamin D, zinc, and iodine, those are the top nutrients that are a little more difficult to obtain. Um, I have attached a link here that gives you some information about uh, vitamins uh, for those specifically that are seeking out maybe uh, doing a vegan lifestyle or trying vegan cuisines. Um, it is important to supplement, so this gives you a little bit of some options there as far as what would be some good ones to try. Okay. Okay, so vegetarian. This might be one that a lot of you are most familiar with. It is a little less restrictive than being vegan. It does still exclude meat, fish, and seafood, but it does allow those dairy and eggs. So it really kind of opens the doors to a lot more protein and a lot more vitamins and essential nutrients. Um, you still may require fortification and supplementation, um, kind of touching upon that vitamin B12. I think everyone that is a vegetarian should be supplementing with that. And then, um, and again, maybe some omega-3 fats and uh, just a really good multivitamin to make sure you're getting in kind of just the base amounts of all of the essential nutrients. Now, with vegetarian, there are a few different types. So lacto-ovo, maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't. Um, it's actually synonymous with vegetarian. So um, might be a little confusing, but Lacto-ovo is basically the same as being a, just a vegetarian. It does allow the dairy and the eggs, but an ovo-vegetarian excludes dairy, but allows eggs. And the lacto-vegetarian is the reverse, excludes eggs, but allows dairy. Now, some people might choose to do these for various reasons. Maybe they're allergic to dairy and this is how they wanna live. Maybe they just have specific reasons, um, personal reasons, health concerns, things like we kind of, we're talking about at the very beginning, um, but there is a little bit of flexibility with with that vegetarian um, diet. So, just wanted to touch on that. Okay, pescatarian. I love this one. I feel like um, I couldn't live a life without fish. <laughs> I feel like I'm the fourth on the list, which we'll talk about here in the next slide. But pescatarian excludes meat, but it does allow all fish, seafood, and shellfish. So I've had people that um, 
have reached out to me again specifically with heart health they want to eat more plant-based cuisines, but they want to reap the benefits of those rich omega-3 fatty acids, which are specifically found in your fatty fish, like salmon, for instance, and tuna. Um, so people might decide to, you know, adopt this style vegetarian um, or plant-based diet for that reason. Um, some people just you know, really might desire eggs and dairy. Um, so there's, you know, people that, you know, might want that, people that might not. Um, so I love that there's flexibility with all things, with flexibility with plant-based cuisines in general. Um, I think the primary concern is exposure to heavy metals with high fish consumption. So your larger fish, so on the feeding chain, your larger fish who are eating all of the smaller fish, they are going to be the ones that have the higher mercury content. Um, so that's going to be your fishes like tuna, swordfish, marlin, shark. Um, canned light tuna is best over albacore, uh, just to kind of throw that in there if you guys are big tuna eaters. Um, so still best to limit that to about 12 ounces. So that would equal two to three of those little small cans a week. So if you're kind of a daily tuna eater, that might be something to think about, maybe alternating your fish, alternating your protein sources. Um, and then lower mercury brands are available. So if you're pregnant or lactating, um, when I was pregnant, I would eat the Safe Catch brand, which is a little bit more expensive. So I wouldn't, um, you know, load up on it. I would maybe have one a week um, just to get some of those healthy omega-3 fats um, and knowing that it was a little bit lower in that mercury content. Okay. So flexitarian, this is something that I feel is a great place for people to start if they're really wanting to kind of ease into a vegetarian diet, or maybe this is just where they want to land. I think this is a perfectly fine way of eating. Uh, it's adopting more plants into your lifestyle, but you're still allowing some animal products, byproducts. Those are not prohibited. Uh, this originated in 2008. So it is a fairly newer form of plant-based cuisine. Um, the foundation is built on plants. However, all foods are allowed as desired in smaller amounts. So um, for someone like myself, I'm really an all foods included kind of person if that's what you want. I think that's the key word here, right? If that's what you want. Some people truly desire to be vegan, to be vegetarian, to be specific in their needs and their desires. But if you're someone who's a little nervous about adopting a strict diet in general or a strict form of plant-based cuisine, then this is a nice um, a nice place for you to start. So um, people do enjoy that less rigidity, I guess you could say, and you're still reaping those wonderful health benefits of that plant-based approach. Okay, so next let's talk about some popular plant-based sources of protein. And this is what you guys are going to be sent home with is um, similar, um, but pictures, which, you know, we love at Lifestyle to give handouts with pictures. I don't know if some of you are seeing one of our dietitians right now, but our handouts are so good. And um, so I have attached two handouts, one of plant-based sources of protein, and then you will also be sent one of our convenience meal handouts, which is really cool because it just links pictures and there's, you know, maybe three to four pictures to form a meal. And the idea is that they are 10 minutes or less. So that's always fun as well. Okay, so some popular plant-based sources here, tofu, tempeh, edamame. You guys have probably heard of these before. Um, they're very popular amongst the uh, plant-based community to get a source, a, a nice source of protein into the diet. Now, you can certainly be vegetarian or plant-based of some form and not like tofu, and that's okay. There's creative ways of using it. Um, uh, if you're really seeking 
uh, to get more protein in and you don't like other things and you're kind of just like, well, where do I go from here? That's where the dietitians can help you um, on that personal one on one basis. Um, but lentils, beans, um, those are just such a phenomenal uh, source of protein, very high protein. So definitely beans are a very popular addition to a plant based diet. Um, spirul spirulina is a blue green algae supplement. And so this is something that's popular to purchase if you want to add some extra B vitamins, a little bit of protein. It's also a good source of iron. So just to add in some of those, um, those nutrients that might be lacking if you're not eating any meat and good to put into a smoothie, okay? And then, of course, you've probably heard of quinoa, brown rice, a nice hearty whole grain that um, is a complete protein has or paired with beans would make that complete protein. Um, lots of good fiber coming from quinoa and brown rice. Um, all the seeds, so chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, these are going to be good sources of protein. But as I mentioned before, also really nice sources of those omega-3 fats as well as some extra fiber. Ezekiel bread. I don't know if you guys have heard of Ezekiel bread before. Maybe some have, maybe some haven't. So it's a form of sprouted grains. Sprouted grains is a type of bread where they have actually started the sprouting process of the grain um, early. And so what this does is it helps enhance nutrients. It helps to increase. There's um, in Ezekiel bread specifically, there's um, added legumes, so added um, extra protein from that. So this is a nice version of a higher protein, very whole grain quality bread product um, that does need to be stored in the refrigerator, I might add, because it does not have any um, preservatives, so it goes bad very quickly. Um, protein powders. Those are very popular when you're trying to be, you know, creative with getting protein, especially if you're a vegan and you really just um, need something quick and fast like most people do these days. I'm going to be talking about protein powders um, and supplementation specifically in another uh, presentation, but um, some of my favorite protein powders are either the Vega One if you're vegan um, or the Orgain is another really good option as well. So those are two of my top favorite protein uh, powders. And then obviously if you are allowing eggs and dairy, that's going to contribute to your protein as well. Um, okay, so continued on the next page are just a few more uh, popular sources. Nutritional yeast, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but nutritional yeast is an inactive form of yeast. It's um, very similar when kind of made into a sauce, certain recipes, it thickens up like cheese. So this is a very popular um, new, uh, flake, they're flaky, so flaky um, substance to use when you're wanting to make cheese sauces for pastas or whatever it is that you're using a cheese sauce for. Um, and it also is loaded with B vitamins and has protein as well. And just one little fun fact with nutritional yeast, which I found out maybe about 10 years ago, I, I had never heard of this, but I had someone make some homemade popcorn and kind of sprinkled, she sprinkled a little bit of that on top and I didn't know when I had it and I thought, gosh, that is such an interesting, nice flavor. And it just added this almost cheese-like kind of uh, nice texture to, to the popcorn. So if anything, sprinkle a little bit on your popcorn and try that out. It is kind of fun. So um, oats are going to give you a little bit of protein. Kidney beans, soybeans, black beans are another one of my favorites. I'm being redundant here with nuts and seeds. I mentioned that on the last slide, but other nuts like almonds and walnuts and all the wonderful source of healthy fats, um, they're also going to give you a serving of protein as well. Um, and then chickpeas. So, and then I've given you guys another link here to access at home, just a nice guide to um, vegan protein sources because I think vegan is kind of a more complicated one to be, you have to be a little bit more creative with some of those protein sources. 
All right, guys. So I think the theme of today is not that you have to rush home and be a vegan. OK, that is not the theme. The theme is what how can we you know come up with some simple ways to adopt more plant based dietary habits? So I've kind of come up with what I feel are um, a few simple, effective. Maybe you even start your goal after today's presentation is to pick two. Pick two from the list and go from there. Because the idea behind it all is that we're just eating more fruits and vegetables and foods that are um, intended and built and made and formed to make our bodies feel good. And that's what these foods do. Um, so the first is to include a fruit and or vegetable at all meals. OK, so and then once you feel really comfortable with that, maybe you kind of fit them into your snacks. OK, um, maybe you can make one meal each week plant based. So one dinner, one lunch, start with something simple, start with something like the dish I'm going to make for you today. Um, maybe experiment with a plant based source of protein you've never tried before. If you've not tried protein powder before and you really have been thinking about making smoothies, we're really leading into that really fun time of year. Smoothies are fantastic with those fresh berries. The strawberries are coming out and they're so tasty and a nice vanilla protein powder um, with some type of um, you know, base, whether that's water or a plant based milk um, and then whatever fruits and vegetables you want to throw in there is so simple to um, whip up and have maybe a couple of times a week. So maybe you build a meal around a salad a couple of times a week. So getting more leafy greens, getting more, um, you know, colorful vegetables, making a pretty salad. I always that's my one of my favorite things to do. I can't eat salad every single day, so I don't ask other people to do the same, but maybe a couple of times a week. Um, maybe you try dressing up your fruit for a fun dessert at night versus maybe, you know, trending towards some of those things that, you know, we kind of wished we ate less of at nighttime. Um, so again, strawberries are in season. Go grab you some of those. They're absolutely delicious. Um, get you a, a non-dairy whip. Um, try that out on it. Or, you know, maybe you do. There's something called Cocoa Whip, which is made with coconut oil, and it is phenomenal. Um, that you can get in any grocery store just right by the Cool Whip section. Um, I love a scoop of that on some fresh strawberries. Really, really yummy. Uh, maybe you work up to adding a serving of beans every day. So a half a cup is a serving. So maybe you sprinkle a half a cup um, or even a quarter cup of chickpeas on a salad and then a quarter cup of chickpeas in some type of wrap or something like that at another time or mixing it in with tuna. I like to do that. Um, Maybe you focus on nuts and seeds as additions to your meals and snacks. So maybe we have a serving of almonds with, uh, you know, an apple for one of our snacks, or maybe we sprinkle some walnuts on our salad or in our oatmeal in the morning, or um, even in a yogurt or something like that for a snack. And then let's try swapping those refined grains with whole grains. So think sweet potato, quinoa, oatmeal, just to name a few, um, versus fries and cereal. You know, we need fries sometimes, people. I am with you. But if you find yourself that's kind of the regular, then maybe we try making some homemade sweet potato fries at home um, or, you know, something like that to kind of switch it up. All right, guys. So. I am excited to share this recipe with you guys today. This is from a website called Eating Well, which I think I featured some recipes so far this year. Absolutely one of my favorite websites. They give you the nutrition facts if you're counting macros and you're following that kind of thing. If you're not, it's just simple most of the time. Everything is fairly simple to make and everything that I have made has been absolutely delicious, including this recipe. So let's get started. OK, so one thing I love about spaghetti squash is that 
it's really good in my opinion all year long. I I I love it. I kind of go through spurts of eating it and then not eating it, but um I think it's something to um switch up from having pasta all the time and um another really nice benefit is that for an entire cup of spaghetti squash it's 42 calories versus you know upper twos for um for pasta or right around that two range for pasta. So you just save a lot of calories there just to kind of have on other stuff. Um, it still has that fun taste to it. If you're just absolutely like, I can't do spaghetti squash, then um, there's other things that you can do with zucchini noodles. You can make some of the little zucchini noodle lasagna rolls, which are kind of fun, or the zucchini boats. I don't know if you guys have tried those. Those are really fun too. But for today, I chose the spaghetti squash. So, okay, first I wanted to talk about um, how to cut and bake a spaghetti squash because, you know, there's tricks to it all. Um, I've actually pre-baked it because it takes me about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to bake a spaghetti squash. So first thing, that's a, um, that's kind of a prep thing to do the night before because it's so simple and it's just not hands-on at all. But day of, right, that seems very overwhelming. We get home and then we have to bake a spaghetti squash and wait 45 minutes and then put dinner together. So I suggest baking it on a weekend and then using it like Monday, Tuesday for this recipe, which can be thrown together very simply. All right, so I'm going to um, heat my pan up here and kind of dip this down so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, the first thing that we are going to do is I'm going to just pour, you guys maybe can't see my pan, but I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see it in just a minute. But I'm going to pour just um, maybe one to one and a half tablespoons of oil into my pan and kind of get that ready because we're going to saute some onion and some garlic first, okay? All right. So I'm going to cut up this onion. All right, just kind of like to cut the ends off. This is how I do it. You guys might have other fun ways of chopping up an onion, but today I'm gonna kind of do uh, some larger chunks. So it depends on how um, chunky you like your onions. So I kind of like them. Um, you know, a little texture to them. I'm gonna throw them in here as I do it and then I'll angle my computer. Just a second. And if anyone has any questions as I'm chopping, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, I'll try to um, read off some of these questions. Um, where did you say that you would find the cocoa whip? Oh, oh, so that's in any grocery store right by where just the regular Cool Whip is. Okay. Yeah, so good. I think um, So Delicious is the brand. I'm talking about. And um, someone asked, nutritionally speaking, which is better, oat or almond milk? Ooh. I think that they're both, I think it's just a preference. Let's just go with whatever your taste preference is on that. They're both great alternate sources of, you know, non-dairy um, milk. So I think oat milk is gaining a lot of popularity. I'm going to be honest and I've never had oat milk. Um, but I think it's a flavor preference kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Whatever you prefer. And then we've had a couple people ask if you have a reputable source or a recommendation for purchasing um, supplements and then protein powder. Yes. So I think when it comes to, um, let me just angle up so y'all can see me. When it comes to supplements, you guys can go, there's a website called labdoor.com. You can search supplements on there and it gives you ratings. So it tells you you know, 
kind of like just a variety of things. It rates it on, you know, on how clean it is, all the, you know, like byproducts that are in there. There's lots of different things that it can kind of show you. Um, but I think it just depends on the supplement itself. I've linked to you guys some things that I've uh, researched and found. So they can be found on some of those links that I sent you in the presentation. So it kind of going over some, um, some multivitamins and things like that, just to kind of give you some ideas of some good brands. Um, so if you're looking at specifically um, omega-3 fats, that's a big one to supplement as well. Nordic Naturals is a really popular brand. Um, Ritual is a nice popular clean brand uh, for multivitamin. Um, but again, you know, searching and looking, you can literally just look up any vitamin on labdoor.com and brands, you just click on that rating, say, I want to look at the A ratings. I want to look at, you know, A or B is what I would say to stick with. And then boom, all, and it links you to uh, the where you can purchase it. So a lot of times Amazon is good just because it's easy. You don't have to gallivant around and you can usually get some better deals that way. Um, so that's what I would recommend doing. Okay. And do you recommend, um, sorry, canned salmon or fresh salmon? I think either, okay? So um, I am not someone that says no to canned. Uh, uh, so specifically um, tuna and salmon. So I think either either are fine. All right, Someone, guys. Oh, oh yeah, okay. sorry. Go we'll ahead. Go ahead. No, go we'll ahead. That. We'll come back. Okay. Let me, I'm just gonna switch uh my little pedestals here so you can see. All right, hold on one second. The things you have to do when you cook from home do demos from home. You have to get um, very creative. So, right. So I think that's going to give a better angle. Okay. Is that an okay angle? Can everyone kind of see that? Yes, that's good. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, so these onions are cooking. So we just have one onion chopped and then we're going to take four garlic cloves and I'm just going to mince them so they're already peeled so I just have some peeled garlic and I'm just going to mince them right into my to my pan okay now you can do um already minced garlic but I think this might have been something I touched upon in my last presentation but there's more potent health benefits when you fresh use fresh garlic and I love the flavor of fresh garlic. So I feel like I can tell, <laughs> I can tell a difference. So I've just gotten used to the fact that it takes maybe just that little bit longer. Clean out my mincer and just put in. And these things are an absolute must if you love garlic and you use a lot of garlic. So if you don't have a mincer, you need to get one. Very easy to use. And guys, I'm actually, I think peeled five because I don't think you can have enough garlic. Um, so I'm gonna do one more. So we're gonna let that cook for a minute on about medium, because you don't want it to burn. You kind of just want it to kind of slowly cook in there and get brown. And right before the presentation started, Kara mentioned had a really good um, thought. So if you're vegan and you don't do cheese, so you could actually substitute um, tofu for the uh, ricotta cheese that I'm going to be using. So very interesting. I love that. See, a very creative way to use tofu. Uh, sometimes when tofu is mixed into dishes like something like this that has a really strong, powerful flavor of, you know, the onions, the garlic, the sauce, the all that, 
it's really, you, you don't taste it. Um, it's for a lot of people, it's kind of more of a texture thing. So, okay, so we're just stirring up this onion and this garlic for about three minutes. So we've been doing it for, for around that. I just put that garlic in, so I'm gonna let it kind of saute a little bit longer. Um, all right, well, let's talk for a second spaghetti squash. So purchasing a spaghetti squash. It's over by where the onions are, where the um, winter squashes, acorn squash, things like that are. Um, you can get various sizes of spaghetti squash. And when you guys see my spaghetti squash today, it's pretty, it's pretty big. So I, I could not find the two to three pounders. Um, and I just you know, I kept telling myself I'm going to go around and, and try to look for one, but I literally went to two grocery stores and same thing, four pounds. So I made do with it. It just gets a little extra spaghetti squash in my particular dish, but it takes a little bit longer to cook when it gets to be that point. So for me, what I like to do is I take the squash, all right, and I poke holes in it, okay? Um... I pop it in the microwave, so I take a fork, kind of poke holes in it all the way around to provide that little bit of ventilation. I pop it in the microwave, and I cook it for five minutes, okay? Because that's going to be what allows you to cut it. You cannot cut it without doing that, unless you're very brave or just exceptionally strong, which I'm neither of those two. So <laughs> anyway, I... I cut my squash and then it's almost like a cantaloupe inside or a pumpkin. You know, it's got um, more like a cantaloupe because you're going to cut it down the middle and then you've got your seeds and your pulp. And I like to scrape mine out. You can bake it and then scrape it out. But I just go ahead and scrape that out. And then um, I'll show you here in a second my squash and how I actually go about baking it. But I wanted to just kind of the first step is holes poked in with a fork, pop it in the microwave for five minutes so that you can cut it down the middle, okay? So that's step number one. All right, I am going to add, let, let me just double check my recipe here. So next we are gonna add our mushrooms. So I just have a container of Baby Bella mushrooms, about eight ounces or so. Um. And I'm going to kind of saute those in. I might try to just take my, I'm going to get a harder spatula and kind of just cut those. I don't know. That's just what I do sometimes when I'm cooking. If it's a little too, they're a little too big. And then they cook down. And Baby, are you so we've got our mushrooms, that? we've got our onion, and we've got our garlic so far. So fairly simple. So we are going to let those mushrooms cook for about four more minutes. So let me show you guys my spaghetti squash here. I'm gonna bring it over. All right, so on the end, when you cook it, sometimes it does get burned. It's okay, you are not eating this, all right? What we're doing is we're creating a reservoir and then we're gonna stuff this with all the things that we're cooking right now. Um, so again, when you get your squash, you know, this is a half of it, you're poking the holes in it with a fork, you're plopping it in a microwave, you're cutting it down, and then you're digging out the seeds, which are just kind of right up at the top, discarding them and what you do is you take your spaghetti squash and you plop it face down okay so you plop it face down onto the baking sheet what i like to do you can put a little bit of olive oil over it so it kind of gets in there you can um pour water in the pan just enough to kind of provide this kind of thin layer just helps it steam and cook, I think a little bit easier. And for this four pounder here, I cooked it for, um, uh, I cooked it for an hour. So if like the recipe says, you get a two to three pounder, that would probably be more like 45 minutes. 
Um, sometimes I just check it and if it doesn't easily flake away with a fork. I'm going to show you. I left one side undone um, so that I could show you what it looks like when you kind of break it away from the squash, but it should easily, easily scoop out. And it looks like these little strings, which kind of resemble spaghetti. Um, okay. And I will show you guys that in just a second. Let me get back to our stuffing. So what we're doing right now is we're just making our stuffing for that spaghetti squash boat. Kara, is there another question or two? I'm happy to answer. Oh yeah, we have lots of questions. Okay. Um, I was trying to type in for some of them, but a couple of people asked about uh, the difference in cow's milk versus they say almond or oat, but there's a lot of other, you know, plant based milks out there um, in general. How you feel about that? Um, just how I feel about plant based milks versus cow's milk and the nutritional value. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So, um, so guys, I just took a look at the time and I'm going ahead and adding in because this has to bake for at least 10 minutes or so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add in two cups of uh, sauce. And so this is just two cups of no added salt crushed tomatoes. So I'm going to add that in. And then um, a little bit of Italian seasoning, so about a quarter teaspoon or so. Um, I'm literally going to do a dash of red pepper because I don't tolerate red pepper very well. It's really spicy, but if you really like it, then a quarter teaspoon is about what they recommend. Um, so I'm going to kind of mix that all together. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, OK. Let me get my quarter teaspoon. So we're going to do a quarter teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. All right. And yeah, just to touch on the cow's milk versus the, um, uh, the plant-based milk. I really think, again, it's I'm not someone that says for health reasons, you can't drink cow's milk. Um, sometimes people rely on that for their calcium and for their protein for certain reasons, and it that that's fine. Personally, um, I think if you're non-dairy and you can't handle lactose, then yes, a plant-based milk, of course, is the way to go. And they um, nutritional differences. Uh, Almond milk actually has more calcium than um, cow's milk. Now that I'm, you know, remembering, of course, that. But otherwise, you're just sacrificing a little bit of protein. So cow's milk has about eight grams of protein per serving, whereas almond milk has like three. So you're, you're or four, somewhere around there, you're losing protein. But you can gather protein from other things. So it's not essential to drink cow's milk for calcium or protein. So, um, so yeah, I think that's just kind of a personal preference and, um, and that's about, that's kind of how I look at it. All right, guys, I'm going to stuff one of these spaghetti squashes. I'm going to just stuff half, uh, whereas you would have, you would stuff both halves if you were cooking it at home. Um, this half, just to show you really quickly, this is how it should fall apart. See how it just kind of naturally falls to the sides. It's just very easy to kind of poke through. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is I have my reserve spaghetti squash mixture over here. And what I'm going to add to it is a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. OK, so we're just going to dump a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese in there. And I'm going to just mix that in. So this is kind of our 
cheesy. This is a great side dish, by the way. If you guys just like, I love spaghetti squash with just a little bit of Parmesan cheese and salt and pepper on it. Very good. All right, so we've got our mixture, and then we've got our um our mixture here. And then we'll have a good 10 minutes to just answer questions. Okay, guys, while this is in the oven. All right, so I'm gonna take our spaghetti squash and put it a little bit closer so you guys can see it. I've got some mozzarella cheese and I've got some ricotta cheese. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to spoon a little bit of the squash mixture into the bottom here. So you kind of just take a nice little heaping spoonful and just kind of layer it on the bottom, all right? Kind of layer that on the bottom. Maybe about a quarter cup or so of that mixture. And then what I would do next is you're gonna take your, where'd I put my spoon? Um, we're gonna put say about let's see this is maybe about a quarter cup to a half a cup or so there's really no perfect measurements here you know it doesn't even give perfect measurements it just says about a quarter of the mixture okay so you know just have fun with it don't get to oh gosh i've got to have this specific amount it doesn't have to be like that um okay so we're going to take a little bit of that and then we are going to do fourth a cup of mozzarella. So let me get this fourth a cup here. So about a fourth a cup of mozzarella cheese. I'll show you what that looks like. So, okay, we've got a fourth a cup of the mozzarella cheese in there. And then we're going to do a fourth a cup of the ricotta cheese. All right, so what I do is I just put the dollop and then I'm just going to kind of spread it around. It's kind of a messy looking dish, but it's so good. Um, all right, and then we're going to do repeat the squash. So we're going to add a little bit more squash mixture. Okay, so I'm just layering a little bit more of the squash mixture. And then let's see, a little bit more of the tomato sauce. Right. Um, and then we're going to top it with the mozzarella cheese. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get that in the oven so that it's baking. All right. All right, so we've got that in the oven. 10 minutes. Okay, so I got a little rush there with time. I'm sorry, but basically, yeah, you're just layering it like you would a lasagna. And the recipe is very easy to follow. So you're just having that squash mixture, which again, we're pre-baking the night before so that you don't even have to worry about it. Um, you're cooking those onions, those garlic, that mushroom mixture, the mushrooms with the tomato sauce and adding a little bit of salt and pepper, red pepper flakes if you like a little spice. And then um, you're just doing a layering, um, you know, layer what I showed you. And so we'll wait for that to come out. I'll show it to you before the, um, everyone gets off the meat, okay? Um, but yeah, let me help answer some more questions while we're waiting. We had a couple people ask about coconut oil um, and saying yeah. that they were told, you know, read that it was not healthy. So I don't know if you want to address that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There was some controversy over the coconut oil. So, OK, the problem was I think about three or four years ago um, or maybe it was a little longer than that, maybe about five years ago. I actually wrote an article on this. Um, 
So coconut oil kind of got this really big craze and it was just coconut, coconut oil, everything. Um, no, coconut oil is a plant-based source of saturated fat. So a lot of folks feel, a lot of studies have shown that that is a little bit of a different effect on the body than animal saturated fat. All right, so coconut um, is actually good good for you. But again, I mean, coconut oil is loaded with calories. So we can't, just like a lot of oils, we can't overdo it. So I really think that um, minimizing and understanding how much oils vary your oils, you do not need to eat coconut oil for everything. And that's just what people were doing. Um, uh, and so there are certain things that I like to use coconut oil in. Um, certain baked goods. If I am making a homemade cleaner version of a yummy treat, I love some coconut oil in there because I love the way coconut tastes. But I'm not cooking with coconut oil and doing this on a daily basis. Um, so coconut oil is also has other really good things that it's known for. It's really good for your skin. Um, it can be a base carrier for if you use essential oils. So there's other ways of using coconut oil, but that's a really good question because it really did get this just intense spotlight as this miracle oil about, you know, like I said, about five or so years ago and everybody was just on this coconut oil train and nothing else and so um again yeah takeaway is vary your oils there are so many wonderful oils that are out there for you should be using them all um trying different ones out uh finding what you what flavors you like sometimes avocado oil goes really nicely with certain things whereas sometimes i like to use sesame oil whereas sometimes i like flaxseed oil um so i think yeah vary your oils and save that coconut oil for certain things that you just really enjoy um the flavor of it with yeah it looks like your video was a little behind but you're you're Sounds uh -oh. really good. Um, Sorry. It we'll was good. So, and then a lot of people asked what oil you were using um, today to saute, how much you used, and different oils. And I know we get into this a lot of times talking about different oils, and there are so many that have different benefits in cooking um, temperatures. Um, and so I didn't know if you wanted to mention what oil you used today. Yes. So, since I was cooking on a lower heat today, a medium, um, to medium low heat, I was using olive oil and I use olive oil most of the time. It's my favorite oil to just kind of use if I'm roasting, so I'm really in a hot, hot environment with the oven, um, then I might use something like avocado oil um, just because it can take really hot, high heat. Um, like I mentioned before, I like sesame oil when I'm doing Asian dishes. Um, rapeseed oil is also really good. Um, let's see, flaxseed oil. So there's, you know, but for me, my favorite oil is extra virgin olive oil. That's going to be what I use most of the time. And let's see, I just went way too high to answer a question. Um, <laughs> and someone asked about if they did start um, a plant-based diet, how long they may, how long it may take them to see results. And I, I guess you'd probably say that may vary. So it does vary for sure. I mean, there's no way to know 100%. Now it depends on what type of results you're looking for. If you're looking for just the way that you feel, I'd say immediately. I would say immediately, one to two weeks. You're gonna know, even like in the first you know, week, you might notice, wow, this food actually was meant, its purpose was to give me energy and make me feel good, 100%. I would say if you have certain things you're trying to correct, let's talk cholesterol. Cholesterol numbers, they don't even check every, they check them every six months typically. Maybe sometimes they make an exception for that. Maybe they'll check it at three months. You usually don't see your cholesterol numbers drop, you know, in a month. Um, but again, you know, that's, that can have some variance to it as well. I'm not a physician. Um, so I think, you know, talking with your primary um, to kind of say, hey, what do you feel about this? You know, I'm working with a dietitian. Do you think that I can check on? Um, uh, we also check lipids too at Lifestyle. 
diabetes, you might see your blood sugars change very drastically um, within, you know, the first couple of weeks, just your your um, your finger sticks or if you have a CGM, which is very popular. We work with an endocrinologist at Lifestyle who is phenomenal, Bhakti Paul, Dr. Bhakti Paul. Um, and so she's a wealth of knowledge with that. But when it comes to uh, something like your hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of your blood sugars over a three month period, yeah, you might, there's a reason why we check them every few months or every six months is that it does sometimes take time for us to see that these things are working. Um, weight management, if you're trying to lose weight, you might see um, a quicker uh, you know, results in that way, but some of these laboratory markers might take a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, it's they're definitely uh, shown to be many, many health benefits to adopting more of this cuisine. And then someone asked, what's your take on TMP? I'm not sure what that is, if you know what that is. TVP, textured vegetable they, protein. They put TMP. Hmm. I wonder if they could say what that meant. Yeah, if you're um, out there and you want to type that in, what that means. Um, let's see. OK. Then, um, are there negative effects to the body if one excludes all oils? There's lots of people that do oil free. Um, I wouldn't say there's negative effects to it. I think if you're getting healthy fats in other ways, avocado, olives, um, nut seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, there's many other ways of getting healthy fats in the diet without it being um, oil. Mm -hmm. So that's again, another personal preference. Um, there's, I wouldn't tell someone they have to not eat oil in order to be healthy. But if someone feels that they want to eliminate oil for specific reasons, then they have every right to do that. And there's ways of getting in fat otherwise. And someone asked about um, how how long you're baking this spaghetti or how long you bake the spaghetti squash for and at what degree? And that's probably in the recipe. Yes, great question. And it is in the recipe. Um, thank you all for hanging in there a little bit longer. Um, sometimes I get this right on with the time and sometimes I, I'm off those few minutes. So um, you would bake the spaghetti squash pre-dish, right? Like the night before, you would do that first five minutes in the microwave, cut it, scoop it face down, and then you plop it in a 400 degree oven for anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes, depending on the size. If it's somewhere around two and a half to three pounds, I'd say 40, 45 minutes is fine. Um, again, take it out, check it. A good sign is that it started, it started to get dark um, on the top. That means that it not not the whole thing burned right but like if it's starting to get a little bit dark and sinking in that it's probably cooked um but you can take it and check it um but yeah my four pounder <laughs> that took an hour and so it was perfectly cooked so and then this particular dish is on a 400 degree oven and um it's typically 15 minutes uh to kind of get that was with two i put one in I did it for 10. It might need a little extra time, but I figured I'd just kind of show you guys what it was starting to look like. Um, but you got the gist of it. It's very tasty. Let me see what it's looking like. Oh, it looks so good. Let me take it out. Um, okay. I don't want to burn myself here, so I'm going to just angle it down. All right, guys. So that's our spaghetti squash right here. I'm going to take a little out of the um, of the squash and put it on a plate and show it to you really quickly. OK. And one thing I love about eating well is for a um, it gives you the nutrition facts. So for a quarter of uh, the squash, so like but so half of a half it's um about 350 ish calories so which is a decent serving all right i'm coming okay and guys that person did say tvp Te textured vegetable protein right um so 
first. So this, what I would do is pair it with a big salad, maybe add a little bit of avocado, um, a little bit of, well, I'll tell you guys really quickly what my favorite salad has been re really fast. Um, I had it the other day and I was like, the flavors were bursting. So it was butter lettuce, which is one of my favorites, very soft as in the name texture, um, banana peppers. So there's a lot of burst of flavor there, some olives, green olives, avocado, feta cheese, and then just a drizzle of whatever dressing you like, whether it's a vinaigrette based or my favorite creamy dressings are um, the Bolt House Farms Greek yogurt ones. And so I like the, the ranch with that is really good. So, but yes, textured vegetable protein a lot of times is associated with processed soy, which is something that I would be a little hesitant of eating a lot of. So that means, you know, Boca burgers, Morning Star Farms, you know, there's proper ways of eating uh, that vegetarian cuisine without overdoing those types of products. So I would just stay mindful. And again, working with a dietitian to help find that balance between those whole foods versus the really good convenient processed foods that I know we sometimes need um, is helpful. But check out those 10 um, convenience plant-based meals because that's kind of a nice approach to quick and easy, but we're trying to be mindful of a lot of the processed stuff as well. Yeah, and that, go ahead, Carol, I'll let you wrap it up. Okay. Wow, that was just wonderful, Katie. And it's beautiful on the plate, too. Yes, so, I'll show it again just for everybody. But it, I am going to maybe munch on this right after. Our, I feel so bad. I think I say that every time. Like, I'm going to go eat this now, and no one can try it. I can't, I wish we could figure out an in person situation at some point. Right. Hopefully, we'll <laughs> get there. <laughs> One so, day, maybe. We went a little bit over today, but it was definitely worth sorry. it. I hope I'm sorry. everyone yes. else agrees. Um, and for all of you who were able to attend, look for an email with today's presentation and recipe, along with an evaluation survey. We're constantly trying to look for ways to improve, so please feel free to give us some suggestions and at the same time evaluate how you have been um, using these nutritional demos in your daily lives. Thank you all for coming, and we will look forward to seeing you again in May. Yes, thank you, everyone. I look forward to seeing everyone in May. Thanks, Katie. This was yes. great. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye.